two weeks before the closing of the 40 days prayers. And it was like a mountain that we looked that seemed somehow difficult to climb. When I called upon them, I said, look at what is on ground. What are we going to do? They say we are equal to the task. And here we are today celebrating the glory of God. So let us clap for ourselves. Praise the Lord. I am called upon to speak on the topic the man of integrity. Praise the Lord. The man of integrity. And the theme of this conference is what? Men of integrity. Let's go to the book of um, 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 to 5. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 to 5. Somebody should help us to read. Hallelujah. Just somebody should give you, give him mic. Wait, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Sabbath said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice in all that he said unto me and have made the king over you. And now, behold, the king walked before you, and I am old and gray-headed. Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken oath of any man's hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I to continue? To verse 5. Okay, verse 5. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you and his anointed is witness this day that he have not found out in my hand and they answered he is witness praise the lord hallelujah this is the voice of the man of integrity i'll see come back to this test but before then let us um, look at the definition of the word integrity. The word integrity means adherence to moral and ethical principles, soundness of moral character, and honesty. So when I'm talking about man of integrity today, I'm also talking about women of what? Integrity. So that it will not be like it is women, I mean it is men's affair. The problem in our society today is that many of us is lacking this virtue called integrity. And that is why we are passing through a lot of problems we are passing through in the country today. From the place we read, you can understand that Samuel was a prophet in the land of Israel. And when God had called him to anoint Saul to be king over Israel, 
He called Saul and the anointed Saul. In a kind of handover speech to Saul and the children of Israel, he made this speech here. He said, I have ruled you people. I have been your prophet. For all these years, I want to summarize my service. As I was serving you people, did I defraud anybody? Did I take bribe? Did I cheat any person? Did I stole anything that belongs to anybody? And after his speech, they responded. They said, you have never done any of these things. That is the declaration of a man of integrity. People like this are hard to be found in our society today. It is difficult to see people that can make such assertion about their stewardship. If you go to various sectors of our contemporary society, you will discover that this virtue is lacking in almost every sector. In the organs of governance, this word, this virtue, integrity, is lacking. In our academic sector, it is lacking. In our commercial sector, it is lacking. Even in the church, it is lacking. How many government officials can make such declaration that Samuel made? How many? How many pastors, how many Christians can make such declaration? How many businessmen in their business dealing can make such declaration? How many students, how many lecturers, how many professors in their academic job can make such declaration? That is the question that we all must ask, answer, one after the other. When I was given the definition of the word integrity, it says it is adherence to moral and ethical principles. Adherence to moral principles. What are the moral principles of Christianity? How many of us as Christians are ready to adhere to it? What are the ethical principles of Christianity? What are the ethical principle, principles of pastoring a church? What are the ethical principles of medical pr pr profession that you have found yourself? What are the ethical principles of um, uh, uh, academic um, uh, job that you have found yourself? What are the ethical principles of the government position that you are occupying? Are you adhering to it? Today, people that have opportunity to serve in governmental institutions, they just see it as an opportunity to amass wealth for themselves. They just see it as an opportunity to impoverish the people they have been called upon to serve because they lack this virtue. In our academic section, now it is only money that passes you in exams. 
You go and saw the lecturer. Where is integrity? Where is adherence to the ethical principles of that profession? But the irony of the whole thing is that some of these offices are occupied by Christians. In our business sector, how many businessmen are transacting their business in integrity? You go to shopping center, you want to buy electronics. You see some people, they will just come and they will confuse you into buying something that is worthless in the bid to make money. And some of the people are doing this are Christians. Go to cemetery market. You see some people, they involve themselves in amending goods that the debt have expired. They will amend it and still sell it. Where is that integrity? You go to uh, 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 Aloji, you see people that specialize, any stolen car, immediately it comes into that market, they will dismember it and sell the pass. Where is integrity? You are called upon to serve in men's department, you are called upon to serve in women's department. Did they have a main meeting? Nobody will see you. Where is the ad adherence to the ethic of that department? Because you came and registered willingly that you want to be a member. But unfortunately, the day of meeting, they, nobody will see you. Sometimes they may even call you on phone, and you begin to ask them, now what are they committing in there? What are they Which means you are not committed. But look at this man, Samuel. He served with wholeheartedly after serving. He made an open declaration of his integrity. If anybody can find fault in my service, let him come up and say it. How many of us can stand in our business premises to say, if I have defrauded anybody, if I have stolen anybody's goods, if I have amassed my wealth, in a way that is not godly. Let somebody come and testify against me. Integrity is a virtue. And God commands that as his children, we must walk in integrity. Let's look at some of the examples of the men that lived and served God in integrity. Job, we all know Job. Let's go to Job chapter 2, verse 3. Job chapter 2, verse 3. Hallelujah.
Yes, Mike, you can give me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God, and eschewed evil, and still who held fast his integrity. Although thou murderest me against him, to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord, and said, Skin for skin, yea, all it's that okay, the only verse 3. Praise the Lord. Okay. Verse 3. And the Lord said unto Satan, Had the Lord considered my servant Job, that there is none like in him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God, and eschewed evil, and see he heard the fast his integrity, although thou modest me against him, to destroy him without cause. And set an answer the Praise Lord. Praise the Lord, it's okay, only verse 3, I need it. Verse 3. It's okay, it's okay. okay. Praise the Lord. Job is another man of integrity. Even God attested to it. God said to Satan, Have you seen my servant, Job? He's a man of integrity. The question today is, can God attest to your Christianity? Can God attest to you as a Christian that you are a man or woman of integrity? Has God testified for Job? Can God testify for you? That is a big question. Job, we all knew his story. The Bible says he's a man that feared God. And when trials came, people were coming to him, tempting him to wander away from that integrity. He still maintained it. He said, I am not going to shift out of my relationship with God. No matter what is happening, even if I'm dying, let it be. But I must maintain my integrity. But to some of us, when some difficult moments come, We will begin to shake. We will, be, we will begin to be moved like wind. Some of us in that situation are ready to lose their integrity. Some of us in that situation are ready to forget about God. Then the question is, what makes you a man of integrity. What makes you a woman of integrity? If you cannot stand in the times of trials to defend what you believe, to defend whom you are. But Job, irrespective of what he passed through, irrespective of the challenges he faced, even the wife at a point came to him and said, why are you still maintaining your integrity? Why don't you curse God? Some people lose their integrity because of friendship. Some people lose their integrity because they are looking at somebody. But even in the case of Job, the wife could not convince him to destroy his integrity. So when we are talking about integrity, we are talking about men, women, who are ready to stand by what they believe, who are ready to defend what they, are be they believe.
Let us also look at the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our example. He is our master. And this virtue, he possessed it. So let's see what the Bible said about him in the book of Mark chapter 12 verse 14. Mark 12, 14. Where is Chukuma? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when they we are come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true, and carest for no man. For thou regardest not the person of man, man, but teachest the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you read the New International Version, you will understand this um, particular scripture very well. The Jews, they came to Jesus. And they said to him, Oga, we know you as a man of integrity. We know you as a man that stands by his word. We know you as a man that pursues good and escapes evil. We know you as a man that has good sense of judgment. But in this case, we want to know your mind. Is it good to give tribute to Caesar or not? But one thing that is open here is that they acknowledge Jesus as a man of integrity. Can people around you acknowledge you as a man of integrity? A man that stands by his word. A man that defends what he believes. A woman that stands by her word. A woman that defends what she believes. The Jews acknowledge Jesus as a man of integrity. And he is the example of our fellowship. Can we be acknowledged in the yard we live as women or men of integrity? Can we be acknowledged in our communities as men and women of integrity? Today, it is an eyesore that Unbelievers, Merike Tuego, Nye a believer, Kojide, and at the end of the day, Akorega Hakoko. And the Hanyerega in confidence that as a Christian, they are safe. Some people in a church here now, Roraka. Ichinye hawa on Ohanaka six months, five months. Where is integrity? Some people go abazirego from somebody. I will give you with Oloma, and the person will give you the money. When the time of paying back comes, you will avoid the person completely. And the person eventually calls you, eventually calls you. The way and the manner you will respond, the person will even regret why he extended that goodness to you. Where is integrity? But our master Jesus here, in all his dealings, the Jews acknowledge him. They said, or God, we know you as a man of integrity. 
Can people testify about you as a woman of integrity, as a man of integrity? Okay, let's see um, our brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In the book of Daniel chapter 3, verse 15 to 17, we may not read there because of time. But we know the story too well. These men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we are among the people of Israel that went into captivity in the land of Babylon. And to, normally, that place is a strange land. Nobody is taking them, no prophet, no, nobody. If they desire, they can live their life anyhow, they can do anything they want to do, nobody is observing them. But in that strange land, a challenge came. And that challenge is about their faith. The king built an image and said, at the sound of a trumpet, every human being in Babylon should bow down and worship that image. But these three Israelis, these three Hebrews, said to themselves, even though we are not in Israel, even though the prophets are not there, we are not going to bow down to this image. We are going to defend our integrity. We are going to stand by our integrity as children of God. But today, is it applicable in our lives? Can we defend this faith outside this auditorium? Can we defend this faith in our community? Can we defend this, play, this faith where we are living? Can we defend this faith in our marketplaces? But this man stood their ground in a strange land and said, if we perish, let us perish. But one thing we know is that we are not going to perish. Integrity is a great virtue. And for you to function as a good Christian, for you to function in life successfully and pro prosperously, you need integrity. When I'm talking about integrity, it's just common good manners, good moral life. When you say something, that your something is yes. And that yes is yes. When you make a promise, you keep that promise. Even if you are not going to keep it, go back to the person you promised and say, please, I'm sorry. Look at what happened. I cannot meet up with what I promised you. That is integrity. When I was in Lagos with Mawaga, there's something that used to happen. He will see you on the road. Sometimes if I lead him to airport, he will see some people. He say, ah, where, are, where have you been? I've not seen you for a long time. What are you doing now? This year, na, maybe na he call this. I say, don't worry, okay. Come, just come to the house. Come to the house. I'll. Obi oma ge me chagi gi feel eh that na ebi ha lan problem ga agula. But unfortunately, by the time he na chora ebi yard, what you will see, maybe you knock. He will tell us to go and check who is knocking. I'll come and tell him. I say, is he so so person? Inyo ga jumu onye si abia. Who told him to come? Who told him? But don't worry, I'm going to get a report. Stay here. And some people are like that.
May God help us in Jesus' name. This big house, the family of CPM, you are seeing today, is sustained by the power of the Almighty God through a man of integrity. If our daddy, Reverend Dr. Ezekiel, is not a man of integrity, I don't think that this family will exist. At least in Nigeria, he's been testified of. When other general overseers and ministers are running Hector Skater to the government house to look for contract, to look for money, to beg for arms and all the rest of them, he is not interested because he knew, and he equally says it, that these people are not his class. That these people are contaminated. I don't want to contaminate myself with these people so that tomorrow I will not be bold enough to tell them the truth. Today, some of us can, because of the muscle of bread, sell our integrity. I remember in one of the days we went to Lagos for the men's conference, he was talking about the people in authority. He said that what they are doing is not good. He condemned some of the attitudes of the government and said, they should forward it to them because he himself is not going to dare to beg money from them. Rather, if they need money, they should come to him and he will give them money. Praise the Lord. This house is sustained because we have a man of integrity that is behind it. Even in this local church, when you are under a master, I think the most important thing you have to study about that your master is the way and the manner he lives. That is why in the Suro Iboje, see, show me your friend, I will show you the type of person you are. So if you are in this local church and you have not learned anything from our daddy here, it means you don't understand the reason for coming here. Today, this church can go to uh, the people that sell um, um, pepper, this paper is a poster. We can go there and say we need 10 bundles of pepper. They will give it to us on credit. Why is this possible? Because there is a man of integrity in the house. And when a pastor on the they will not go to that company again. You will not see them there again. Maybe in the if they see them on the road, how Koro have one story or the other. We can go today and borrow some of some of the things you see that we are using to work, some of these metals. Sometimes we go to borrow. And they give us. Because there's a man of integrity in the house that we say we will pay. And we will pay. May the Lord bless our pastor in the mighty name of Jesus and continue to keep him for us. There are disadvantages of lack of integrity. You make yourself an enemy of God. When you lack integrity, you make yourself an enemy of God. Let's see Proverbs 12.22 Proverbs 
22 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Verse 3. A prudent man foresees the evil. You are reading Proverbs 12, 22. Is this the place you are reading? He said, lying leaves are abomination to the Lord. But they that deal truly are his delight. Praise the Lord. They that walk in integrity are the delights of the Lord. When you live a transparent, honest, and sincere lifestyle, you will be the delight of the Almighty. But when you live a forward life, that is why the Bible says, to the forward, he will make himself what? Forward. And to the upright, he will make himself what? Upright. When you live a forward life, you make yourself an enemy of God. Not only God, you make yourself also enemy of man. Because if somebody do something with you, and at the end of the day, you prove to be untrusted. Can he do it with you again? No. Number two, it brings destruction. Let's see Proverbs 11, 3. 3 says, The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Praise the Lord. Have you seen it? The perverseness, the forwardness, of the people that lack integrity, we destroy them. For example, if ever and I got not any credit, give also. It's just why you go that side again because you don't want to pay. Give you ever and I got credit, but also it's just why you go that side you don't want to pay. Give you guys, what I give you guys, you charge the whole four corners. So, if you commit yourself all right round, where then will you go? There will be no hiding place for you. So it destroys the future of somebody. If people cannot trust you, if people know you as a dishonored person, if people know you as a person that cannot be trusted, you are finished. See, life is not all about money. You may not have money, but integrity pays. There is this man who worked in a company as a gate man. And the people were committing all sorts of crime in that company to make ends meet. And they are telling the man, they say, what are you doing here? They are not paying this and that, and you are suffering. Why don't you find a way to make ends meet. The man said, no, I cannot go against my principles. I'm a man of integrity. I'd rather remain poor than to do something that is against my principles. Do you know that this man went through sufferings in life and at the point of death, he called his children and said to them, I'm about to go the way of men. But I, I'm just leaving one asset to you. They said, what is that? They were thinking that maybe the man built house somewhere and hid it. Or the man kept money somewhere and hid it. They were expecting to see something like that. But the man said, they asked the man, say, what do you keep? They said, I have keep, kept something for you. They said, what is it? He said, my integrity. 
and they were disappointed. They say, what rubbish is this? We are thinking that you are telling us that there are some secret buildings you had, there is money you deposited in the bank, and you are talking about integrity. What are we going to do with your stupid integrity? And some of them started cursing the man in agony, in pain. The man died. But after his death, something happened. One of his child finished his studies and went out to look for a job in the job market. As he entered into one office, where they announced for vacancy, he was told to bring his um, um, credentials. And when he brought it, the interviewer looked at the credential and saw the surname. When he saw the surname, he said, I'm somehow familiar to this surname. Please, can you call, me, call in the fellow? They called the young man. He came in. The interviewer asked him, say, where are you from? He's, he, he, he told him his um, community. He said, I used to know a man that answers this name. Do you have anything in common with him? He said, yes, he's my father. The young man asked him, I said, is, do you really mean that this man is your father? He said, yes. Yes. Is there anything that can identify that that man is your father? He said, yes. He said, go and bring them and come back the following day. He went home, took the photograph of the man, took some things that can identify the man and went to that company. On reaching, he saw the man, he gave it to the man. The man, after looking at it, he said, provided you are the son of this man, this job is given to you. Because I know your father is a man of integrity. If you can tell the part of your father, your life will never remain the same. There and then, the young man was given a car, was given a house, was given a better pay. The question is, did integrity pay? Yes. So, irrespective of what you are passing through, sometimes integrity has a cost. Irrespective of what you are passing through in your life of integrity, don't care, don't bother. Joseph, a man of integrity, suffered in Egypt, went to prison, but at the end, he was crowned a king. Maintain your integrity, God is not. Wicked that he doesn't know what befits you. Keep your integrity. At appointed time, God will prove himself. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's consider some of the advantages of integrity. It brings security. Let's see Proverbs 10, 9. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. 9 says, He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverted his ways shall be known. Say, He that walketh Uprightly, walk it surely. A man of integrity lives with assurance. Just like I said now, I now roll some of these things. We don't have money, but our integrity 
is giving us assurance, we can always go and borrow. That at the end of the day, we will pay back. Our integrity is giving us assurance that people will give to us. But some people today cannot get help, cannot get assistance from people because they lack integrity. No matter how little that thing is, I will end in a man that in a isim maluchiregi ne na abiechi ebiazi. No disappointment. Some people don't even take it as anything. If you are not going to come, call the person. I'm sorry, I will not meet up tomorrow for so so reasons. It makes you a man of integrity, a man that keeps his word. A woman that keeps his word, her word. It leads and guides one. Integrity leads and guides someone. Let's see Proverbs 11, verse 3. Three says, The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Integrity guides, protects, defends. For example, there was um, some people that involved themselves in a crime in the company. That is a bank. The time they wanted to commit that crime, they called some staffs and say, look at what we are going to do. Can you assist us? But they reached to a particular person. They went, you know, they don't come straight. They went to lobby him indirectly and he discovered what was about to happen. He said, I'm not going to be part of this. But at the end of the day, he never knew that these people continued with it, that plot. And eventually, they swindled money from the bank. But after the transaction, it was stressed. And EFCC went after them. And all the people that were involved were arrested. The man that maintained his integrity, was he among them? No. So it protects. It preserves. Integrity preserves a man, preserves a woman, protects a man, protects a woman. God rewards integrity. God rewards integrity. Let's see Proverbs 20, verse 7. 7 says, The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, A just man walketh in his integrity. And his children are blessed after him. Just like the um, uh, um, story I told us. Some people today, the favor you are receiving is as a result of the life of your parents. For example, when we go to Lagos for men's conference, do you know that the Boeing State is one of the states that is respected in Lagos. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Why? Because of the man in the house. So God rewards integrity. In your, in, your, in, your, in your work to keep 
Sustain your integrity. Don't faint. Don't grow weary. God rewards integrity. Keep it up. At the appointed time, you will see the hand of God in your life. Amen. It brings a lasting establishment. It brings a lasting establishment. First Kings 9, 4 to 5. First Kings 9, 4 to 5. Paul says, and thou, um, if thou will walk before me, as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. As I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man, upon the throne of Israel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So because of the integrity of David, the Lord promised that he's going to establish his throne forever. So integrity brings establishment. In life, when you are a man of integrity, a woman of integrity, you are establishing yourself. You are establishing your posterity. You are establishing your children after you. But there is something you will do it becomes a stigma to your children. There's a life you live, it becomes a stigma to your children. But when people see you as a man or woman of honesty, transparency, sincerity, a man or woman of integrity, it will secure the future of your children. So may the Lord help us to pursue this virtue, virtue for it is a great gain. Amen. The Bible encourages us to pursue integrity. Let's see Philippians for it. Philippines for it. If somebody has no international version, he can use it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God, the word of God, admonishes encourages us as believers to live a life of integrity. He said, whatever that is good, whatever that is honest, whatever that is sincere, whatever that is trustworthy, think about those things. Walk in that direction. Live in that direction. Follow that path. That makes you the man or the woman of integrity we are talking about today. Let's see Second Corinthians two four to two. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse two, I mean. Verse two say But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. 
not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, I have renounced the things of dishonesty, dishonest gain, dishonest conversations, dishonest attitude. He said, I have renounced it. As a child of God, you need to renounce everything that speaks of dishonesty, everything that speaks of unfaithfulness, everything that speaks of untrustworthiness, because that is what destroys your reputation as a child of God. Remember, we are talking about men and women of integrity. There is no other way our society will be good today. There is no other way the church will be good today. There is no other way our nation will be good today if this virtue is not put in place in our lives. And I pray that God will help us to imbibe this virtue in every aspect of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us stand up and pray. We have had it today that God demands from us this, this virtue of integrity. Based upon the word of God that came forth this morning or afternoon. When we astray our mind, when we astray our life, we will have a cause to say, oh God, help me. To say, oh God, give me the grace to live the life of integrity. I know it may be difficult, but the Bible says, with God, all things are possible. And the English people say, where there is a will, there is also a way. So we are going to pray this afternoon. Oh God, help me to maintain my integrity in any situation. Whether rain, sun, or whatever, help me to stand by what I believe. Help me to live by what I believe. Let us pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, whichever way, O oh God, that our integrity is seeming to be on stake, Lord, we pray for strength. We pray for grace to abide in you. We pray, O oh God, that your strength will carry us. Your strength will keep us and support us. O oh God of heaven and earth, carry us in your ego swing. And so above everything that will tamper with your glory in our lives. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Let us pray also and ask God to forgive us. Anywhere we have lived a life of dishonesty. Is it in our business? 
Is it in our services in the house of God? Is it in our academic pursuit? Is it in our appointment in different offices? Let us ask God to have mercy upon us and forgive us. Let us pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that thou shalt forgive us anyhow and any way we have lived a life of dishonesty, a life of untrustworthiness, a life of lack of integrity. O oh God of heaven and earth, let your mercy prevail for us. Show us, O oh God, the strength to prevail. Give us the strength to prevail and empower us to excel above every limitation in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. If you ask...